let's quickly look at the concept of disposal of subsidiary then what if you are saying multiple dates of acquisition right you acquired controlling interest over a subsidiary let's say for suppose there can occur a situation where i am disposing of my subsidiary as well what do you mean by disposal of subsidiary i'll tell you whenever i look at the concept of disposal of subsidiary it should happen something like this i was originally holding x uh, holding company h was holding in its subsidiary let's say about 80% stake there are three types of disposals possible i'll tell you. first disposal disposal number 1 of 20% in such case your holding and subsidiary relationship is intact because even after disposal there is 60% interest which is controlling interest that, that means I will continue to consider but let's say but my disposal was 40 percent let's say 50 percent disposal 40 or 50 anything is the same holding company right now in its subsidiary can only control up to a maximum of 30 percent so there is no control interest here your controlling interest is lost and now it became substantial interest. Once it becomes substantial interest, it is treated as an associate. It is an associate, and therefore the consolidation should be as per case 28 as per equity method. By the basis, full consolidation method as per the content, you will continue to consolidate as per the same method as per the same method. No change in methodology. Let's say I am talking about third type of disposal where my disposal is about 65 percent then what happens now now the holding company its subsidiary is holding only 15 percent stake there is no no substantial interest no subsidiary no associate in such cases then there is no consolidation But you have to account for these investments as per account as per India's 109. So my India's 109 in third type of investment. Guys, in each of these cases, what should I do with the goodwill? What should I do with the non-controlling interest? Let's look at that. When controlling interest is retained, I'll consolidate and I'll continue to consolidate even as per India's 110 only. But once I get substantial interest, that means the controlling interest is lost, then I will consolidate as per equity method. If any other case of consolidation or disposal where the voting powers fall less than 20%, then you will have to apply India's 109 and classify these investments as financial instruments carried at fair value through OCI or fair value through PNL. You will get these logics when we discuss about India's 109. Clear? Let's move further. Now I will talk about equity method for joint ventures and associates as per equity method consolidation. When I ask you to prepare a financial statement as per equity method of consolidation, remember. As it is, whatever is the balance sheet of holding company, as it is, will appear. As it is will appear. Sir, where is consolidation then? Wait. Two changes occur. One change I will do on liability side. 
one change I'll do on asset side. The change on the asset side and the liability side should be exactly the same. Then only your balance sheet will tally. If I add 10 to the asset side, I'll add 10 to the liability side to make sure that the balance sheet tallies. What is that one item on the asset side which should change? The one item on the asset side which should change is the carrying value of investment in associate or in joint venture. On the liability side, the change occurs in other equity in consolidated balance sheet. So one item on the asset side investment change, one item on the liabilities other equity or your reserve has changed. What is the change? When you calculate carrying value of investment, then in such cases, I will take the share in net assets of the associate or share in net assets of associate or joint venture on the date of acquisition. That is share in net asset on date of acquisition. If I'll add goodwill or deduct bargain purchase, I will get what is the cost of acquisition. Cost of acquisition, everyone knows because anyways balance sheet will tell you. From that cost of acquisition, I will add share in post acquisition reserves of associate or joint venture. Once I add the share in post acquisition reserves of associate or joint venture, I will get the carrying value of investment. So what is the only change which I did? Adding the share in post acquisition reserves of associate or joint venture to your asset side to the cost of investment to get carrying value of investment. The same change I will do on liability side. Whatever is the balance of other equity in parent enterprise, I will add the change share in post acquisition reserves of associate or joint venture. That is the only change which occurs both on asset side as well as on liability side as far as equity method of consolidation is concerned. All other items, no additions. Whatever appears in parent enterprise, whatever appears in holding company, same values will be taken over even in your consolidation. Clear?